The Boeing 747 was the world's first jumbo jet. It opened new possibilities for passengers all over the world and reshaped the aviation industry. The 747 kept innovating all the way up until the current year with dozens of variants that could accomplish almost any task that engineers threw at it. The 747 would even be adapted to carry space shuttle orbiters and it was the base design for a plane you are sure to recognize. So stick around to learn more about this iconic jumbo jet. A new plane for a changing world. By the 1960s, Boeing had already ushered in a new era of transportation with their 707 series that made international travel a reality for more people than ever before. Airlines saw the potential for increased growth and that's when Pan Am approached Boeing with a proposal. Pan Am, or Pan American World Airways, was the largest international air carrier for the majority of the past century, enduring as a company from 1927 until 1991. Yuan Trip founded Pan Am after graduating from Yale and serving in the United States Navy. Trip began to notice that airports in the 60s were being overwhelmed by the number of people flocking to see the world abroad and the number of business class patrons returning time and time again. Trip saw a solution to the problem and asked Boeing to build a plane twice the size of the 707 to improve the economy per flight freeing up congested runways and allowing for more people to fly with fewer planes to save the company money. Designing the world's first jumbo jet. In 1965, Boeing assigned their engineer and design team manager, Joe Sutter, to the project. And unlike many planes which changed their names during development, even in the earliest stages, this plane already had its iconic 747 moniker. Joe began a study with Pan Am and other major airlines to iron out everything they needed for their new plane. And he quickly discovered that many industry leaders believed that supersonic technology from military planes would soon take over the commercial industry as well. Sutter kept his fear in mind as he drafted designs that could be repurposed for cargo lifts instead of supersonic commercial flight one. Initial plans called for a high-wing design, which Boeing would later employ for their C-17 Globemaster III, and it's also the wing placement used for one of the largest airplanes ever built, the C-5 Galaxy by Lockheed Martin. The fuselage was designed to stretch up underneath the second story of the plane, but this caused problems with evacuation routes, so the fuselage was widened to reduce its height. The cockpit was placed on the upper deck much further down from the nose of the plane to allow for a loading door to be positioned under the nose. This same design would also be functionally adopted by later military cargo planes. In his memoir titled 747 Creating the World's First Jumbo Jet and Other Adventures from a Life in Aviation, Sutter called this recessed cockpit the hump of the 747. Engine technology improved leaps and bounds around the time of the 747's development with the introduction of the high-bypass turbofan engine. At the time, only General Electric had this technology lined up for production in collaboration with Lockheed, but Pratt and Whitney were well on their way to developing their own version with the JT-9D. The JT-9D engine would get the green light for the 747, making it the first civilian wide-body airliner to make use of the technology. And because of the unprecedented size of the plane, Sutter and his team worked hard to introduce redundant systems to reduce the impact of any system failure by adding dual control surfaces, backup hydraulic systems and an extra set of landing gear. The team at Boeing added Kruger flaps and a system of three-phase slotted flaps along the wings to improve lift. Kruger flaps can be attached to the leading edge of a wing, they hinge forward to produce upward pitching moments. The 747 Kruger flaps were made from a fiberglass honeycomb lattice that would compress in the air to create an aerofoil cross-section to generate more lift. Storm clouds on the horizon. A year after Sutter began drafting up plans, Pan Am ordered 25 Boeing 747s for a total cost of $525 million, which equates to more than $3 billion today. These first 747s would be dubbed the 747-100 variant, and Pan Am's enormous purchase along with Tripp's original vision gave Pan Am enormous control over the design and development of the 747. 
Some say they were even more hands-on than the US military staff working with Boeing on projects such as the B-29 Superfortress and the XF-8B. Once the first 747 was constructed, the testing phase began. Before embarking on runway tests or flight tests, the team wanted to test the evacuation procedure, as the 747's immense size and carrying capacity were never before seen, and safety was paramount to sell tickets to the public. The first evacuation test took a minute longer than was allowed by the Federal Aviation Administration guidelines, and even worse than the time gap, several volunteers were injured in the process. The team managed to improve the evacuation time to reach the 90-second time limit, but more injuries occurred. The problem seemed to lie in the upper deck. Most planes used slides to evacuate, but the upper deck used a harness system which could pinch and cause jerking motions for the volunteers' necks and limbs. Flight tests revealed problems with the JT-9D engines, which could stall from vibrations within the turbine casing. Then structural problems with the wings of the 747 were discovered as the wings were shown to wobble and flutter. Sutter and the Boeing team solved this problem by adding depleted uranium to add weight. Depleted uranium contains fewer than half the radioactive capabilities of regular uranium, but maintains its intense weight. And if all that wasn't ominous enough, one of the five test planes took heavy damage during a botched landing attempt. By the end of the testing phase, Boeing was over $2 billion in the hole and close to bankruptcy. But they turned it around and became the worldwide name behind the jumbo jet sensation. The many models of the 747 Over the decades of its iconic run, Boeing improved the 747 with numerous different models. The first was the 100SR or short-range model, which increased passenger capacity for short-distance flights, and they followed that up with the 747-100B that improved the maximum takeoff weight. The SR variant was a specific request from Japanese airlines, which needed the jumbo's capacity for flights between its major cities. This variant would aim to over-double the operating capacity of the base model 747, by reaching 52,000 flights in 20 years, compared to the 24,600 flights of the regular 747. To achieve these goals, the fuel capacity was cut by 20% and Boeing added additional structural support to almost every part of the plane. The next leap forward came with the introduction of the 747-200 with new JT-9D-3A engines, which improved the overall flight range with heavier payload. Passengers on these models got the luxury of added windows on the upper deck, up to 10 from the previous three. But that's not all. The 200 variant had multiple sub-variants designed for specialised purposes, including a convertible model dubbed the 200C, a freighter or 200F version, and a combi variant that could be used to carry passengers or freight, dubbed the 200M, while the passenger-only model got the tag 200B. Gigantic improvements. In 1972, Boeing finally made a deal with General Electric to bring their CF650 series engines over to the 747. This announcement ushered in an even bigger improvement to the 747 with even more options. Rolls-Royce also made a deal to add their own engines to the 747 for increased flexibility and improved production time, as the planes could pick which engines to use based on price and availability. The 747-300 was the next variant which lengthened the upper deck by 23 feet and added another exit door. On the interior, a straight stairway was added instead of a spiral staircase, which added more room both above and below to fit extra seats. The 300 series also got a slight boost to its cruising speed, allowing it to reach Mach 0.85. Like the 200 series before it, multiple specialised variants were produced. The 400 series reduced the cockpit crew to two instead of three by cutting back on the number of buttons, gauges and dials present on the control panels, all the way down from 971 to 365. Fuel tanks were added to the tail along with a redesigned interior. Three new sub-variants were introduced with the 400 ER Extended Range Passenger, 400 ERF Extended Range Freighter and the 400D domestic model.
After the 400 series, Boeing designed a unique model called the 747 LCF or Dreamlifter. This model could hold three times the weight of the 747 400F and it was specially crafted just to transport components of their upcoming 787 Dreamliner to various countries for different stages of production. The most advanced mass-produced model is the 747-8, which skipped the traditional naming scheme because it used the same cockpit technology and engine system as the Boeing 787, making it almost a hybrid between the two. The 8 variant was the first stretch version of the plane, and the increased horizontal length allowed for a longer fuselage. These models can carry 16% more weight on average than freighter models from the 400 series, and they are designed to reduce the carbon footprint while being quieter and more efficient. This final model of the 747 could typically seat 467 passengers with a maximum allotted seating of up to 605 passengers. Maximum takeoff weight jumped by almost 100,000 pounds to a total of 987,000 pounds, and the 747-8 has greater fuel capacity at 63,034 gallons. Changes to the aerodynamics of the plane along with its improved engines and fuel capacity improved the lowest possible flight range of this model to 7,730 nautical miles, even though it's heavier than all previous 747 models. The 747 was also adapted for use in the US Air Force, with the VC-25 designed to carry VIP operatives, which became known as Air Force One. Air Force One is technically the air traffic control call sign for any aircraft carrying the President of the United States, but the Boeing VC-25 variant of the 747 is the most iconic version of Air Force One planes. It was used during Ronald Reagan's terms and the VC-25 was the plane carrying George W. Bush during the tragedy of 9-11. The story of Air Force One could be a whole video by itself, so let us know if you want to hear more about the history of presidential aircrafts. The end of an era. The Boeing 747 has been one of the most influential commercial class planes for over half a century, but it's had its fair share of problems over the years. Flight might be statistically the safest mode of transport, but the 747 has had a disproportionate share of catastrophes, with close to 200 accidents. While tragic, one notable incident in 1983 changed the world. A Korean airline 747 accidentally strayed into Soviet airspace and was shot down. To prevent a future tragedy of this nature, President Reagan released an exclusive military technology to the civilian world. That technology was the Global Positioning System, or GPS. It's hard to imagine a world without GPS, as it's now a smartphone staple, and with 6.6 .6 billion smartphone users around the world, that means 84% of the world's population can use GPS every day. While GPS innovation doesn't change the lives lost in the accident, that day was a momentous event in the history of the 747 and in the history of the entire world. So far, a total of 1,569 Boeing 747s have been produced. Four more 747-8 variants still remain in production, but after these are completed, Boeing commercial airplanes will stop production of the 747s at the end of 2022. But even after they're out of production, the history of the 747 will live on. There are almost 20 747 planes on display at museums around the entire world. That concludes the huge history of the Boeing 747, the world's first and most iconic jumbo jet. What facts about this plane surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments section. While you're there, like and subscribe to get front row seats to the next aviation video coming your way soon.